If at first you don't succeed, call in an airstrike. This is one of uh, the infamous Murphy's Laws that is so popular among uh, everybody, but including those in the military, uh, things like, if it can go wrong, it probably will. But what if the aircraft that you are wanting to call in to perform that strike is in danger of being pulled away uh, and being retired so that you cannot call on it anymore? This is exactly the problem that, is fa that the Fairchild A-10 Thunderbolt II is facing. Uh, the A-10 was designed back in the mid-70s uh, with the threat in mind of a possible Russian armored advance through Central Europe, but has since then turned into uh, the premier aircraft for providing close air support, or CAS, to uh, our troops on the ground. Now, yet the Air Force, uh, more specifically those in executive positions uh, here back in the States, as well as the politicians on Capitol Hill, are trying to retire the A-10, um, and their motives for doing so are uh, a shrinking national defense budget, as well as replacing it with newer, more technologically advanced aircraft. <clears throat> now, uh, I am, as was stated before, I'm a history uh, buff and uh, have a vested interest in the uh, military as in our troops. Uh, and I also uh, have contemplated joining the Air Force in hopes of flying the A-10. So uh, for me personally, this is a, a great passion of mine because this is the only plane I would ever want to fly if I ever joined the Air Force. So today, we're going to be looking at the reasons why the A-10 should not be retired. First, we're going to look at the capabilities of the aircraft, of both the A-10 and other aircraft, uh, in the role of providing close air support. We'll be comparing the costs of the A-10 uh, to the other aircraft that are slated to take its position. And we'll also look at why the A-10 is the best, the best option for performing this role. And we'll conclude with what we can do as civilians to ensure that this aircraft stays flying and on station for our troops on the ground. So Chuck Hagel, the former uh, Secretary of Defense, stated that, once stated that the A-10 is a 40-year-old single-purpose aircraft. It cannot survive or operate effectively where there are more advanced aircraft or, or air defenses. And he stated this in a PBS NewsHour interview on the uh, whole debate. Now, uh, Mr. Hagel's statement here uh, covers a lot of the general arguments against the A-10. However, uh, it cannot stand up to extend scrutiny, which is what I hope to, uh, hope to do today. Now, the A-10 is far from a single-purpose aircraft. Uh, the Air Force's website listed its, uh, its jobs as the following. It can provide close air support, forward air control, combat search and rescue, strike control and reconnaissance or SCAR, air interdiction and anti-maritime, which basically means not only can this take out tanks, it can take out ships if it needs to. Uh, but what is these other aircraft that, the, uh, that are slated to stand in for the A-10? Uh, we're going to be looking at four uh, of the major contenders for the spot. Um, that's the F-16, the F-22, the F-35 fighters, as well as the B-1 bomber. And the Air Force's website also lists them all as multi-role fighter all the way across the board with the exception of the B-1 bomber. Now, multi-role fighter pretty much means it's either on the offense or it's on the defense. Um, so uh, <laughs> the A-10 is obviously much more uh, well-rounded when it comes to providing close air support on the ground. Now, it is important to note that these aircraft can provide air support, but it's not uh, to the same precision or to the same, uh, to the same extent of safety uh, as the A-10 can. Now, what about costs? After all, money is, a, is the main driving factor behind retiring the, uh, the A-10. The Air Force says we're going to save money by doing so. So let's take a look at some of the numbers here. We have the unit cost, or what it costs to build uh, a single aircraft. The A-10 is the, uh, on par with the F-16, uh, you know, shaving off a few decimal places and whatnot. And it is also the cheapest per flying hour to keep and maintain flying missions and on base. Um, now you'll notice that the F-35 is missing from, this, from, this, or from both of these lists, rather. Uh, and that is because after, after uh, over nine years of development, it is still in development. Uh, it has been pushed back again and again, and it continues to fail, uh, or, or you know, performance issues and things of, of that matter. But here's the real kick. The F-35 project has cost the United States taxpayers over $398 billion, and it still does not work. And they're trying to get it into, uh, into service by 2019 or 2020. But a project that has cost $398 billion and still doesn't work uh, and they're trying to replace the cheapest aircraft that the, uh, the Air Force has right now, that argument kind of falls apart when you look at the numbers like that. 
to put that number in perspective, thinkprogress.com uh, takes that $390 billion and figured out that uh, that is enough money to buy every documented homeless person, or about 600,000 people, a house worth $660,000 or it could fund uh, the National School Lunch Program on its current budget and feed every school-aged child in America for the next 24 years. So uh, with those numbers in mind, um, I think it's pretty clear that the A-10 is the cheaper option and not the, uh, the, the fiscal way to go. Now, when these newer, more advanced aircraft are placed in the A-10's role of providing CAS, they cannot perform at the same degree, and this is because they operate at higher speeds, higher altitude, and with a limited view of the battlefield. Now, and this means that they cannot provide uh, air support to those on the ground with the same precision or within the same uh, measures of safety. Take, for example, uh, a story as recent as June of last year where a B-1 bomber was used uh, over an A-10 to provide support for a special forces group. And uh, because it was flying at such high altitudes, it was incapable of IDing the troops on the ground, and instead of dropping its ordnance on the target, it, it dropped uh, several bombs on five special forces troops as well as one Afghan soldier and, and um, blew them into eternity. So uh, this is why the A-10 is so important. It was designed for this role. Because it is capable of flying at lower altitudes and lower speeds, this grants the pilots uh, greater uh, view of the battlefield and they can see what's going on in real time instead of being relayed information or imagery from drones and uh, cameras from on the ground. Um, and because of this, they, 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 excuse me, they can deliver more accurate fire and fire uh, as close as 20 or 30 meters uh, in front of troops and can do that safely. And it can do all of this because the, the pilot is and the plane are protected by a plethora of safety features. Uh, the first being that the cockpit is not only surrounded by bulletproof glass like many of the aircraft are today, but it also sits within a titanium tub, uh, which protects the pilot from ground fire. Uh, in addition, the fuel tanks on the plane are self-sealing, so if they take hits, the, uh, to a certain degree, the fuel tanks will seal themselves and prevent fuel leaks. And the, the um, flying controls are redundant, which means there are a lot of uh, backups to the backup to the backup to make sure that if anything cuts out or is damaged, like hydraulics or electronics, the pilot still has the ability to bring his, his bird back home uh, safely. And it can take, because of all these measures, it can take incredible amounts of damage. There have been stories of A-10s limping back home with half of a wing blown off or only coming back on one operational engine and it was still able to fly uh, later on as well. So, so far we've looked at the comparisons of the, air, the A-10 to those that are slated to take its position. We've looked at the cost differences and proven that the A-10 is actually a very cheap option, if not the cheapest option for, for um, performing in this role. And we've also looked at why the A-10 performs this role so well. But you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with me? Why should I care? Uh, and this is understandable. Uh, I, it's understandable and I hope that none of us walk out of here and directly into a firefight uh, somewhere on Bellarmine's campus. But we have to understand that these are our soldiers we're talking about and their livelihood. We're talking about their resources uh, f that they call on for when they do walk out of their barracks or wherever they're sleeping and they do go into a firefight. Re and these resources are in danger of being taken away from them. But we can do something. This is an issue, as I stated before, that is in contention within Congress, the people that we elect into power, and we also have the ability to have our voices heard. Uh, one specific way, and a very easy way, uh, in this technological age to get in contact with your senators or other appropriate government officials is a Facebook page uh, dedicated to providing information not only on uh, articles and the current, uh, current state of affairs with this debate, but they also provide articles uh, or they provide links and pre-written uh, prompts to send your, uh, your congressman, your senator, your, uh, or whoever uh, the necessary uh, representatives are. And it's all right there. You can click on any of these links and it will take you either to the website or give you a template where all you have to do is fill in your name, uh, where you're from, and any sort of uh, personal comments you might have. We have a means to send a message to those who are in charge of providing these resources to our troops. And it is uh, our responsibility to make sure that those that protect us at home and abroad have the resources they can, uh, that they, they have to do so. And so in, in closing, I would like to leave you with a quote 
from uh, one of the chief uh, designers of the A10, Pierre Spray, who uh, said it best when he said, what is at risk is the lives of a lot of troops, troops that we owe the ability to pull out of trouble. Thank you.